My friends, happy Easter and welcome to the Word Exposed. Join me in contemplating the Lord present in the Holy Scriptures today, the Easter Sunday of the Resurrection of the Lord. This is the start of our 50-day observance of the Easter season. Today onwards, we are going to ponder the resurrection, the central tenet of our Christian faith. St. Paul said, If Christ did not rise from the dead, then the faith that we preach and profess is in vain. It is the climax of the saving act of God. Sin and death are defeated. Today's Gospel from St. John brings us back to that morning when St. Mary of Magdala saw the empty tomb. She ran to the disciples, thinking that someone had taken the corpse of Jesus. Yet we know from other accounts that the risen Lord appeared to her, making her the first to proclaim the good news of the resurrection. Let us live the resurrection in our daily lives too. According to Jesus, the Holy Spirit will not invent new truth. The Holy Spirit will lead us to the truth that Jesus has already taught. When you have the Holy Spirit, you can speak and explore different languages to address people of different needs. Barriers and boundaries of discrimination, division, and injustice should disappear. The diversity of the gifts should not be a hindrance to the strengthening of the church. God chooses all. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter proceeded to speak and said, You know what has happened all over Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John preached how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power. He went about doing good and healing all those oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses of all that he did, both in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. This man God raised on the third day and granted that he be visible, not to all the people, but to us, the witnesses chosen by God in advance, who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commissioned us to preach to the people and testify that he is the one appointed by God as judge of the living and the dead. To him, all the prophets bear witness that everyone who believes in him will receive forgiveness of sins through his name. The Word of the Lord. Our first reading on this Easter Sunday is taken from the Acts of the Apostles. Let us reflect on living Easter in our daily lives. I know many people are overwhelmed by the thought of the resurrection of Jesus, the meaning and significance of Easter. And somehow they say, wow, it's too far from us. It's too remote when we consider our daily concerns in life. But if we look closely at the biblical witness about Easter, we will see that Easter brings us back to daily life. Easter is about life. And so it should not remove us from our daily concerns. Let us look at the speech of St. Peter. Wow, it is filled with realities of daily life. How did they get to know Jesus? As a person, yes, holy, filled with the Spirit. And they said, he did good things. He went around go doing good works. And he healed people. Imagine. 
That's the life of Jesus. Going around. I know many of you want to go around, but going around doing good things. And when there is wound, woundedness, where there are hurts, He offers healing. The other thing, Peter said that, well, Jesus was misunderstood. He had a lot of enemies. He was put to death. But God raised him back to life. In daily life, we experience opposition. In daily life, we cannot please everyone. That was the experience of Jesus. Well, we are luckier. Not all of us will be put to death, hopefully. <laughs> but uh, Jesus experienced that. But God was on his side. And God raised him back to life. And this is the good thing, the good news. After the resurrection, what did Jesus do? The victorious one, he appeared to his friends. Look at that. This is an ordinary event. Go to your friends. Show yourself. Show who you really are. You don't need masks. You don't need to pretend to be somebody else. Go. Like the risen Lord, visit your friends. Show your true heart. And then St. Peter explained to them that the risen Lord ate and drank with them. An ordinary event. Go, eat with others. Eat with your family. Eat with people who are not invited to any meal. Eat with them. That was what the risen Lord did. He ate with others, sharing a meal, sharing stories. That is the resurrection. Then Peter said, he asked his, his friends, his disciples, to witness to him, to tell the truth about him, that there is forgiveness of sins in his name. This is the power of the risen Lord. Forgiveness. Understanding. Telling people who have gone astray, God waits for you. There is a future for you. My dear brothers and sisters, just in the first reading, we have already so many things in daily life that could be the apparition of the risen Lord. Visiting friends. Showing your true heart, eating with people, drinking with them, telling them about forgiveness, go around doing good things. That's Easter in daily life. It has been a while now since we started this program in 2008. From day one, you have been with us, our dear friends, assisting us with open hands. We are inviting you once again to be our partners in this ministry. Following the mandate of the Lord to bring the good news to all, we can continue to broadcast and reach more people with your support, bringing the good news to them through television and the internet. Friends, your offering would be very much appreciated. Thank you. May the Lord reward you a hundredfold. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Colossians. Brothers and sisters, if then you were raised with Christ, seek what is above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Think of what is above, not of what is on earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, your life, appears, then you too will appear with him in glory. 
the word of the Lord. Our second reading on this Easter Sunday is taken from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. We have been reflecting on living the message of Easter in daily life. In the first reading from the Acts of the Apostles, we saw how Easter and the experience of Peter and the disciples of Jesus, the risen one, came in ordinary forms in daily living. Jesus appeared to them as a friend. So, a visit to a friend, showing your true face and your true heart. The risen Lord ate with them and drank with them. So, sharing a meal, sharing stories during a meal, inviting His disciples to talk to others about forgiveness of sins and hope for new life. Wow, that's ordinary, very ordinary. Telling people you have a future. There could be forgiveness of sins. Easter doesn't have to float above. Easter, new life, should be lived here in daily life. St. Paul, in his letter to the Colossians, gives us some sort of a vision. He says, you have already died with Christ. So, the old life, our old life, governed by sin, controlled by the dictates of what we call the world, meaning sinfulness, evil, that has died. And so we should live daily lives, our daily lives, with new life. And what is this new life? According to St. Paul, it is a life that we now share with the risen one, Christ. He even used this expression, our new life is hidden in Christ. It is hidden where Christ is. He is seated at the right hand of God the Father. And so this hidden life of ours is really in heaven. Now, is St. Paul telling us that to live according to the risen life of Christ, we should escape from this world? Is he telling us to just live up there in what we call the heavens, divorced from earthly life, divorced from the concerns of life? Is he telling us that? No. He's telling us, live your life here on earth, oh, but with your mind and heart focused on the things of God, focused on the new life that Jesus has won for you. So that means, in daily living, people may see you going about your day-to-day -day concerns, your work, your studies, your business, whatever. Your family life, your conversations, your, uh, your, uh, uh, even your simple storytelling, all of those things. But make sure, you are not any more motivated by the concerns of this world. Not self-interest. Not getting ahead. Not destroying others. Not greed. Not profit at all cost. No. All of those have died. So now live your daily life with heaven in your mind and heart. Love of God. Love of neighbor truthfulness, justice, forgiveness, humility, mercy, compassion. These are the concerns of God. These are the concerns of the risen one being shared with us. So live your daily life, but make sure the hidden life in God fuels your daily life. That is Easter in ordinary life. The Proclamation of the Holy Gospel According to John On the first day of the week, Mary of Magdala came to the tomb 
early in the morning while it was still dark and saw the stone removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved and told them, They have taken the Lord from the tomb, and we don't know where they put him. So Peter and the other disciple went out and came to the tomb. They both ran, but the other disciple ran faster than Peter and arrived at the tomb first. He bent down and saw the burial cloths there, but did not go in. When Simon Peter arrived after him, he went into the tomb and saw the burial cloths there and the cloth that had covered his head, not with the burial cloths, but rolled up in a separate place. Then the other disciple, who had arrived at the tomb first, also went in. He saw and believed, for they did not yet understand the scripture that Jesus had to rise from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Our Gospel for this Easter Sunday is taken from St. John. We have been reflecting on living Easter in daily life. Very often when we think of Easter, the theology of Easter, the spirituality of Easter, some of us are, wow, overwhelmed and said, oh, I'm not capable of reflecting on that. That's too high for me. But you know, this is about life. And so if it is truly life in God, victorious, the victorious life of God over sin and death, it must mean something to daily living. In the first reading, St. Peter describes the apparition of the risen Lord, and it happened in very ordinary events. He came to his friends, greeted them. So greeting friends sincerely is living Easter. Jesus ate and drank with them. And so it, eating, sharing food, sharing a meal, and restoring relationships, that Easter. Then, he asked his disciples to tell people, to witness to people, that there is forgiveness of sins in Jesus. So inviting people to hope. In their brokenness, there is forgiveness. There is mercy. That's Easter. In the second reading, St. Paul reminds the Colossians that as they lead their daily living, they should Remember that the sinful self is already dead. Their lives are hidden with Christ in heaven. And so they should bring God's concerns in their daily living. Not anymore the motivations, the concerns of sinfulness, but bringing to daily life the concerns of God. Justice, truth, respect, love peace. Easter is not an escape from this world, but living in this world with the concerns of God. Now the gospel, the narrative, and I owe this uh, reflection to a very good and great Catholic thinker, Fabrice Hajjaj. He opened my eyes to the significance of Easter in daily living. For example, in this passage that we have. First, Mary Magdalene, seeing the stone of the tomb already rolled and the tomb open, she ran to the disciples. And then Simon Peter and the uh, disciple loved by the Lord, the beloved disciple, running with Mary to the tomb, running, wow, running because of Jesus, running for Jesus. That is an Easter event. It speaks of zeal, of life, energy because of Jesus. My dear brothers and sisters, what do you run for? Do we run so that we could go to a, a discounted uh, store? Do we run so that we could get ahead of others? 
If you run for Christ, energy, zeal for Christ, that's Easter. Then the other uh, item in the gospel, the beloved disciple got to the tomb first, but he did not enter. He allowed Peter, Simon Peter, to enter first. It is like saying, you first, after you, I go. This is courtesy, simple courtesy, not going ahead of you. This is respect for others, respect for the weak, respect for the vulnerable, respect for the elderly, respect for the poor, and saying, you first. That is life-giving. So when we see people on the buses, on the trains, you know, giving up their seats for others, that's the resurrection. If you are there you know, waiting for a bus and you see someone elderly and you say, okay, you first, that's the resurrection. When you are studying and you're studying for life's lessons and not to get ahead, just for honor. That's the resurrection. Then the last detail. Simon Peter and the disciples saw that there was no theft here because the linens covering the body are left on the ground. But the cloth covering the face, the head of Jesus, was folded on a separate place. Thieves will just take the whole body, remove the whole cloth, or take the whole body with the cloth. But a thief will not fold <laughs> carefully a cloth covering the head of the corpse. A little work like folding towels, folding shirts in the home. How many times have mothers folded clothes after laundry? How many times have a father folded the uh, cart of a baby to be stored in the garage? How many times a grandmother would fold, you know, the, uh, the, uh, the, the napkin, a table left by a child, where there is cleanliness, where there is concern, where there is folding, you have life, you have caring, there is beauty, that's Easter. Please continue the reflection. When you run for Christ out of excitement, when you run to care, when you run but then you realize, I must stop after you because you are in need. When you, in the midst of, of disarray, you do something that is orderly, that is beautiful, like folding a shirt, a towel, the resurrection happens. I remember in one game, I, I think it is even the Olympics, where uh, an athlete fell and then someone stopped and carried him and they walked together. This athlete did not want to run, ignoring the wounded person. He abandoned his honor, his medal even, with you after you and you see something beautiful unfolding before us that's Easter in daily life the word has been exposed let us now fulfill it it has been a while now since we started this program in 2008 from day one you have been with us, our dear friends, 
assisting us with open hands. We are inviting you once again to be our partners in this ministry. Following the mandate of the Lord to bring the good news to all, we can continue to broadcast and reach more people with your support, bringing the good news to them through television and the internet. Friends, your offering would be very much appreciated. Thank you. May the Lord reward you a hundredfold. Happy Easter again, brothers and sisters. On this glorious day, let us reflect on the peace, the joy, and the hope that come from the resurrection of our Lord. The Gospels tell us that it was St. Mary of Magdala who first saw the sign of the resurrection, and she was the first to proclaim it too. Pope Francis reminds us that she was the apostle to the apostles. It was the risen Lord who sent her to his apostles. She proclaimed to them the good news, I have seen the Lord. We can only imagine the joy that she felt when her teacher appeared to her and called her by name. The body of Jesus was not stolen after all. He is risen. There is hope for new life. There could be peace in our heart. Now in his appearances to his disciples, the risen Lord always greeted them with, Peace be with you. Peace is a gift from Jesus gained at the price of His body and blood, His life given up on the cross. In His farewell discourse, He told them, Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. Because when He would have risen from the dead, peace is the ultimate grace. No other being or thing can gift us with true and lasting peace but the risen Lord. Then there is joy. Seeing the Lord is the singular joy of the disciples. Their world crumbled because of the tragic passion and crucifixion of their master and their fear of the Jews. But what joy when the risen Lord visited them with forgiveness and renewed friendship. He even entrusted to them a mission, the joy they experienced in encountering Jesus again, in sharing meals with Him again, and in learning from Him again, who loves them and calls them His friends, nurtured their faith and mission. This is why even at risk of persecution, they persisted in the work of their master. A last point for our reflection today, the resurrection of Jesus gives us hope. Saint Peter wrote that in and through and because of the resurrection, we were born anew to a living hope. Hope that in the end, it is God who is love truth and goodness who will prevail. Hope that in the end, suffering will cease because Jesus already defeated death. The Lord will wipe away our tears. Hope that the evil one does not have the last say in human history. Friends, as we begin our Easter journey, let us recall that in the risen Lord, there is peace, joy, and hope. How often do we fail to live Easter? But let us remember Jesus who died and rose from the dead for us. I leave you with this inspiring word from Pope Benedict XVI. In our hearts, there is joy and sorrow. On our faces, there are smiles and tears. 
Such is our earthly reality. But Christ is risen. He is alive. And He walks with us. Happy Easter to all of you. Here are some points for your reflection. The first point is, in what aspects of daily life do I need to live the resurrection of Jesus? Sa anong aspeto ng aking mga pang-araw-araw na buhay na kailangan kong isabuhay ang muling pagkabuhay ni Jesus? The second point is, how can we celebrate the resurrection not just for a day, but every day? Papaano natin maipagdiriwang ang muling pagkabuhay ni Jesus, hindi lamang isang araw, kundi araw-araw. O God, you created everything through your word. As we contemplate you in the scriptures proclaimed and heard today, renew us as your children and as brothers and sisters to one another. Amen. My friends, thank you for joining me this morning. May the Lord present in the scriptures make your heart burn for love of Him and move you to love others. Until next Sunday, only here on The Word Exposed. Jesus, ang siyang sa mundo ay tumukong.